has um, all of cosmic history been leading up to this dialogue on predestination? Yes. <laughs> Everything <laughs> since the Big Bang has conspired to bring us to this very point at this time. That's really... Um, I'm not quite sure how you come up with that logic, but maybe we can rehearse it a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you just look back, um, take our lives, and think how many things had to take place in your life before now to come to this point at this time. Not that this is the only best place in the whole world. But, but it's where I am. But it's where you are. <laughs> yeah. It's where you are. And and arguably, if almost you know anything of maybe thousands of things, perhaps millions of things in your past had been different, you wouldn't be here right now. And you, you, you are not aware of those. You can't be capable of, nobody can, going back and cognizing all of the possibilities and choices that were made sometime in the past that led you to be right here at this point at this time. If your grandma had gotten on a different bus or had gone to a different party or your grandfather had you know, gone some other path that day, you wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't certainly be here together today. So, I mean, you, you get into the, the thing of, okay, what point, what do you take out of the entire stream of events that brought you to this point that wouldn't matter? And the difficulty is, is you don't know which one of those really did matter and how much it changed everything that came after it. Right, this is what the time travel uh, science fiction stories always get into. It's like, you know, you don't know which event can change in the past. But I mean, that, you know, as we've discussed, that makes a lot of sense in terms of... Um, deconstructing the idea that we are in control, mm. right? That because, you know, when you look to the past or you look at your own, own involvement in an event that unfolds in the near future, you can see that there's just way too much complexity there mm -hmm. for you to possibly have made that a choice where you somehow make a decision and cause yourself to come into being. I mean, the Long and the short of it is, you know, did you decide when you were going to be born? Right. No. Did you? Are you going to decide when you're going to die? No. No. Right. So that seems to me um, that if we'll really look at it, we'll see that this illusion of control that the eye has is just that. It's an illusion, right? It's a, you know, it's a kind of a mouse cursor that we use to move through the world. And uh, maybe in certain evolutionary situations, it was it was favored. But it's not the case, right? It's not the case that we exert control. It may be sexy to other primates to make it seem like we are right. in control, right. but we're not in control. Right. But there's a then a more kind of a subtle, uh, I think, philosophical question is just because we're not in control doesn't mean that everything is predestined, right? In other words, we can imagine a lot of scenarios, you know, on the continuum between total chaos and total order where true enough there's too much complexity for us our eye if it existed mm -hmm. to be in control but how does that play into this idea that everything is predetermined when we can't even predict for example when a drop of water is going to drop out of a faucet because of uh, the uh, sensitivity of that drop of water to initial conditions mm -hmm. so um, it seems to me there's another piece of that discussion that has to happen and you were alluding to it before but another piece of that discussion has to happen in order to feel the truth of the predestination aspect well it's, it's funny how, how different people feel about the three things and if you say well are you in control of every facet of your life almost nobody will say yes i mean it's it just they've all been through natural disasters they've right. seen calamities family right. members have died they've seen car wrecks that clearly were out of their control so well okay i'm i'm not I'm not in control of everything in my life. But some things I am. Like I can choose fries rather than onion I, I rings. I can choose fries, not onion <laughs> rings, or I can use a small drink rather than a big right. drink. Supersize it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but y those, those come into the same thing, though. You say, well, okay, w which one of those choices were unimportant that I can make? I said, well, if I can't control that, what can I control? And the problem with, with choice and control is that we don't know the implications of our decision. I mean, I, I make a decision to have, you know, I just take five seconds more in line at, you know, the Thai restaurant or wherever. I don't go to McDonald's, but, you know, five, ten seconds longer in line. And at some level, that has perturbed the entire universe. Uh, everybody's universe has been moved by five seconds because my five seconds. And all theirs are moving at the same time. And we don't know who that might impact. Some other diner might have been there. They went out in the street. They got hit by a car. Yeah, they got a, their whole family changed. So we just don't know 
what the implications are of any action that we did. So as far as me saying that I know what's going to happen out of my actions, I don't. Because three, four, five you know, days down the road, many, many thousands of things could have happened perturbed by your seemingly insignificant decision. But you see how that could be actually argument against predestination then. Because the present does not allow us to know what the future is going to be precisely because it's not determined. Oh, right? But, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. but, but you, can't, you can't step out of it. I mean, the, the thing is, is nobody can step out of the out of the dance. I mean, we, we presume that if it isn't predestined, I can step out of the dance. And if I step out of the dance, then everybody has to wait on on me to do something before the dance can go on. No, I, I that's that's not what I intended. I mean, uh, okay. so we give up personal control, individual okay. personal control, and so we are uh, dancing along and buffeted even by all the events that are happening absolutely everywhere in the cosmos since the beginning. Um. Whether or not those events are themselves deterministic is then, it seems to me, a different question. The, the, for me, the reason why they appear to be deterministic is because what you're alluding to is that if everything is one thing, mm -hmm. then that includes past, present, future, mm -hmm. that there is no openness in the future, it's all already happened, as it were. Well, but it, yeah. Yeah, but, but, but it doesn't have to have already happened. I mean, I mean, the argument to me is you have your two poles. It's either completely chaotic or ordered. And I don't have any sense in my life that my life is chaotic. No. I mean, on the contrary, my life is massively serendipitous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, I can watch things being ar arranged themselves in a way that, you know, such low probability events occur in my life. And they're over and over and day by day by day by day. So now I think just me, I think no, 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 everybody, if they just can, can sit back and watch, they can see that their life is massively serendipitous. Sure. Ar arranged. They wouldn't by, be here if it wasn't. They wouldn't be here if it wasn't. I mean, yeah. it, it is, if it was just chaos, then, you know, we'd be as likely to be sitting over in that corner never seeing each other again. And that isn't the case. That isn't what happens. So there is a lot of predestination in our lives to bring us from minute to minute, second, second, second. So if I could choose between chaos and predestination, predestination or order, or let's just say or order first. Yeah. Or order is certainly obvious to, to me. Mm -hmm. And those seem to be uh, logically the only two choices. And so if I've got order, then I say, well, do I have any ability to, to change the order myself? Can I change order? Well, not discreetly to the slightly other point. I can't step out alone of this massively interconnected uh, universe and say, I'm going to make a decision different from what's moving through the dance. Um, there, there, there can't be a possibility to do that because we've got 7 billion people right now running around the planet. If everybody was able to step out of the dance, we're, going to, we're back into chaos again. So there has to be, to web, keep this web working, logically, false to me at least, that there has to be some way that we cannot step out of the, out of the dance. If we could, the whole thing can disintegrate. No, we, we, we definitely can't step out of the dance precisely because of our interconnection right. with each other and with the cosmos. Um, but I think this uh, question about predestination, therefore, you know, I, comes into focus when we say, well, are the only two choices total disorder and total order? Mm-hmm. Or is it that what's unfolding are kind of different levels of order that we have a kind of emergent experience of order where not even the system knows what is going to happen. Not even the cosmos itself knows what is going to happen, which undermines the idea of it being predestined in the usual sense that we mean that, right? That, well, well but, but maybe a question of, of yeah. temporal scale. Yeah. I mean, whether it's pre everything's predestined from the beginning of the Big Bang to the end of this co this next collapse, which is you know, n billion years in the future, you don't need that. I mean, right. for me, it's like you know we have this anthropomorphic uh, wall oneness. If there uh -huh. is if there is the universal field, mm -hmm. you know, we can see everything as one thing. Mm -hmm. And if the Higgs field or whatever we're going to use for the universal field exists, and we think we have the Higgs field pretty well defined now, if if that is self aware, we have no indication, no idea that the Higgs field is self conscious. We have no no way of knowing that. But you could posit that if, if there is an all thingness 
that is self-aware, as many scientists are saying, if it is self-aware, then you, then everything gets explained. I mean, quantum mechanics gets explained, collapse at the electron level gets explained, and this very question gets explained because she she doesn't have to know that far out. All she has to know is this far out, and she's and it's she may be she is a local as well as non-local, where she is learning and seeing each moment by moment. moment. We are not in charge of that thing. Doesn't mean there isn't something. That's it. Something yeah. that is all knowing, that is beyond my very humble intelligence and and capabilities. That is in fact dancing this thing, picosecond by picosecond, and that's the part that we can't step out of. That's the part that's predetermined, not a billion years in the future. Right. But the next picosecond is not within anybody's control except the universal field. Well, that's where this experience of oneness is really, I think, the the, the major premise mm. of this argument. If you experience oneness and you experience synchronicity, then it becomes obvious that at least the scale that we exist on, that everything is unfolding exactly as it should, Perfectly. as it were. Right. Um, but if you uh, don't experience that oneness then you think that the future is somehow separate from the present, right? right? That there's a dualism between the present and the future. Right. And because we can't know what is going to exist with that drop of water as it drops in the next, right. you know, however many picoseconds, right. then it's unknown. Right. But what's interesting um, to experiment with in terms of um, whether or not the Higgs field is self-aware is that we can sort of shift that question a little bit and we can know that in a way it's self-aware because we know about it <laughs> and we are an attribute of that field rather than in any possible way separate from it, right? So if we know about the Higgs field and all of cosmic history can be experimented with anyway as the unfolding of our knowledge of what we really are, mm -hmm. which is an attribute right. of this Higgs field, right. then it's not a stretch at all to say, well, it ha of course it has self-awareness. That's how we know what it is. Right. Um, as opposed to the dualist perspective, which would say, well, how do we know that that is self-aware? Right. Right? Well, if we could separate that, the Higgs field, from us, well, then of course we can't really get our mind around the idea that it is or isn't self-aware but if we can't be separated from it and it appears to be the case that we are aware yeah, right. <laughs> then of course it has self-awareness well and it is mm. i mean uncontestedly all pervasive I mean, okay I mean, no, nobody's nobody's saying it, it isn't all pervasive we, all pervasive yeah. manifests manner right yeah we know, we, we know that part we <laughs> what know else that. do we know about it we, we know, we know it's, it's all pervasive we don't manif we think it manifests matter it actually makes matter come into being and we know that we are conscious. We know that we are conscious. And so you put those three things together, and what you know seems like a kind of wildly unwarranted speculation that there is an attribute of the cosmos itself that pervades all things that is itself conscious right. becomes instead and something that can be observed empirically right. oneself. Almost the yeah. Well, and also too, you mentioned the, the importance of I mean the the value of being able to see that everything is one thing. You can also see that time is an illusion. Yeah, where you know you you fall out of the sense of time and you only live in now. There only is now, not just because Eckhart says that, but there only <laughs> there only is now. Yeah, I mean, there's never a past or a future that you can really. It's an old stored stuff, which it's is now no, again no longer correct. It's now again. It's now again. <laughs> and so that changes the thing about the speculation about long-term predestination. I think our predestination is is zero, mm -hmm. other than the fact that the field is moving. Uh huh modifying picosecond by picosecond, and when you get out of this sense of having a sense of time, then that's much more apparent to you, that in fact, you can you can grok that, that in fact, yeah, yeah I get this, the field is continuously reformatting, rechanging, modifying, sec picosecond by picosecond. So this thinking of, the, of predestination helps us come up against the fact that the future itself is a kind of fiction, Mm -hmm. because yeah. it relies on the separation of ourselves from present moment. Right. Right. And if we dwell in present moment, the question of predestination doesn't even arise. No. Because we just are. Right. And, and there's no, actually, there is no yeah. sense of time. Without right. a sense of time, 
the whole idea of predestination doesn't mean anything. Exactly. There's just now, 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 now unfolding. And the feeling of predestination is, I have always been, right, and I always will be, right, right. Yeah. Useful. Thank you.